What's up, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to the second episode of the Encouragement and Inspiration Podcast. And I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode. It was on Love Before You Judge. If you haven't uh, checked that out, please check that out. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if it blessed you, you know, share it to somebody that you think could use it. And basically, you know, I was just basically talking about, you know, it's kind of hard when you see somebody in a tough situation and they, you know, being able to actually, I talked about being able to, you know, see them not with who they are on the outside, but trying to go beneath that and maybe thinking about like, what has this person been through? What is this person, uh, what has happened to this person for them to be the person that they are today and wh- or who you see them as and uh, their outlet, outwardly uh, appearance and, you know, trying to go beneath the surface. I think Jesus was so good at going beneath the surface and actually getting into their heart because that's the only way you're going to get to the heart is if you go beneath. And so uh, today's episode is going to be about kind of, it's, it's about influence. It's called Watch Your Influences, but it kind of ties into relationships as well. Um, and so I want to, I, I got two scriptures. Well, I don't really have two scriptures. I have one main scripture and one scripture that can just kind of be a reference. Uh, for uh, for the whole you know episode, but you know the main scripture I want to say is, and it's really the first part. It's not even uh, it's a there's three sentences, but I want to just focus on the first sentence. And so it's from Second Corinthians six fourteen of uh, the English Standard Version. It says uh, Paul writes, "Do not be un- unequally yoked with unbelievers." And you know the second part, I really don't want to focus on that too much. Really, uh, I simply want to say, well, I'll say the second sentence. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Okay, and you know the first point I want to make is that uh, is that you are a sum total of your influences and your relationships. You know, people are probably the greatest asset in your life that you have in your life because people are connections. People are you. You have to, especially when it comes to loving Jesus. You know, trying to follow Jesus, be a Christ-driven person. You have to love people. You have to love people, whether you like people or not. You have to love people. And honestly, you know, you don't want to get, you want to get, always have the right people around you because honestly, you don't, ne- you never know what type of relationship, how it will affect you. And you kind of know how it will affect you, but you don't know the whole, you know, you might get a little, a little sneak peek, you, you might know what it leads to, but you don't necessarily know exactly what that relationship might give you. But most of the time, I will simply say that it's, I mean, it's even says it in First Corinthians 15, uh, 33. Verse 33, Paul writes, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. And that honestly is so true because it's hard to be in an environment that's not healthy. And especially if you're not mature in your faith, I think that's such a, such a big thing is like being mature enough to be in a certain environment and not being affected by it. That's, that takes a lot of mature, uh, maturity in your faith. And so as somebody that's new, I don't know if that, if you're in that, if you're in that situation, that spot in your, uh, at this point of your walk with Christ, but you know, if you're not mature in your faith, I would, you know, take the time to actually develop, you know, healthy uh, relationships that are based off of Jesus, that are Christ-centered, that are, you know, God, that basically God has placed in your life to edify you and to help you uh, on your journey. You know, because honestly, it's like I said, when you're young, and or you, you might not even be young, but I mean, you're just now getting to this Jesus thing. You, you just started your walk. It's hard to, you know. Back, it's hard to be in the same environment that you were in, that you were falling into temptations and different things. It's hard to be in that same environment as a new believer and not give get back give uh, give in to what you just walked away from. It, it's just it's hard. I mean, honestly, I don't I don't know about you, but there's plenty of times where I felt like I could have did that and I failed. And honestly, I might not have done been it might not have been as bad as it was the first time, but. It was just like it was almost like I was playing with fire, you know, you, you know, just basically just trying to be tiptoe over along the uh, along the river, along the edge. Like you can't do that, and so have the wisdom to understand, you know, you're not strong enough, and you're not mature enough in your faith yet to actually be in a certain environment and and, and be able to you know withstand temptation and you know de- develop great relationship with friends that are uh, that are you know that are Christians and that believe this, like not necessarily believe the same way you do but believe in Jesus and actually are actually striving to be like Jesus basically you know it's it's such a big thing to have in, in especially in this time of the day uh, time in the world you need friends that push you towards Jesus basically is all I'm trying to say and so the second point I want to make you know Jesus had 12 disciples but only 3 were close to him 
you know, I have a I have a church family, and then I have three best friends. Uh, and I have, I mean, and I do have, I guess, in, in my in my church family, I would say there's at least two people that I actually have a gen- that I have a strong genuine relationship with, uh, and I have you know. I have a pretty good, uh, I have friends in that church family, but I would say there's two that are like really close to me, uh, per, per se, I would say that I actually, I could go, come to them, go to them with, you know, different things, different questions, and, uh, just kind of confide in them in some type of way, and, and you need that, you need people that are close to you, you have friends, and then you have your close friends, you know, I, I have a, my best friends, I, I would say I have my church family best friends, it's kind of weird, because honestly, you know, my best friend, they, I wouldn't say they're on the same path as me, but they're, they're good people. And they've honestly, they've helped me grow while learning to be more wise. I, I would say they've helped me along my journey. They've, they've been kept, they kept it real with me to the point where I, I'm a Christian. I don't necessarily do bad things. And I, I always, you know, try to be who I'm called to be, but at the same time, it's like, you can you have people that you can be safe with i'll say you know when you can let out your anger all those type of things you can tell how you say how you really feel and uh and because we're all we're all human i believe that and that's what jesus had people that you know he could he would he could tell things to them that he wouldn't tell everybody else and you need that in your life you need people that are closer to you than per se everybody else is and that that's when you have that's those are relationships that last a long time when those are the relationships that have a great foundation and they're always strong no matter where no matter what happens in life y'all can always call you, you guys uh however many you are it might be just one and one other person you and one other person but you can go to that person and you're, you're safe you you know you you can feel free to to be honest you know you go to god of course but then it's good to have those those people in your life that you can you know say what's really on your mind and, you know let off a little steam and then you know that person edify you in return Third point I want to make is that your gri- your growth in Christ is subjective to the influences in your life. So that that, that kind of goes back to you are a sum total of your influences, man. You know, you can't grow where you're afraid to get out. Uh, if you're familiar with something, darn, I don't know how to say that. Okay, let me take a step back. You know, like I said, you can't be in an environment that you were just in that you just got out of or that you're trying to walk away from because you finally given you given your life to Christ you know you did a 180 yeah you did a, a, some people say 360 and that's in the same direction so you did a 180 you're trying to go uh, you're striving for Christ you're on this road everything's all good hey don't be don't don't be fooled Satan will come and tempt you the enemy is definitely gonna throw something at you you know there's gonna be a time where that person those, those friends Whoever they they're gonna tell you to go back to doing what you were what you were just doing, and if you walked away from it, it's been a while, and you know, and you feel like you've gotten mature, you feel like you you know made it to a, a point where you feel like you're maturing your faith, and there's just some things that you can't overcome at this point of time in your, uh, in, your in your walk with Christ. There's just some things that you can't overcome. Be wise enough to actually just stay away from it and. And it might it just might not be for you honestly because you're just so different you change and it's not like that you've changed like you don't see the, your friends or whoever it is that you were with you don't see those people as different anymore you just simply think that you're you're, you're on a uh, a journey and you don't want anything to with uh hold you from that journey of getting to the goal don't ever get off the right don't get off the path don't go on the wide path don't go on the path uh travel more so get up, stay on the the less travel uh, path, I promise you. While it might look hard and it might look very, you know, tempting to go back to what you're doing, trust me, just stay on that path. Keep going, keep grinding, stay on it. Don't give up. See the light. The light is at the end of the tunnel. I promise you, you will not regret it. Because honestly, when you actually dabble back into those things, you might not be strong enough to get yourself out. You might not be strong enough to actually, you know, I got in this, I realized it, and now I know, you know, I. it's kind of like, you know, one, uh, third time's a charm, you know, it's that, it, maybe it's not, it, it might not be that for you, it might not be third time's a charm, charm, 
So don't don't put yourself back in that position. Don't put yourself in a situation where you can compromise your values. Because I promise you, especially when it comes to being in a, rela- a relationship, and when I mean relationship, I mean romantic relationship in this instance. You know, if you're in a romantic relationship and you're with somebody unequally yoked, either you're going to compromise your values to make them happy, or that person's not going to be happy, and they, they're they probably more than likely going to leave, honestly. You can't change people. You, people are going to change themselves. And honestly, those are the worst relationships is when you want to change somebody or you try to change somebody. You can't do that. You have to simply allow the Holy Spirit to change that person, but you can't be yoked to that person and, and change them at the same time, because honestly, that person's never going to be everything they've been called to be, uh, and I'm not, now when I say this, I'm talking about people that are single right now, or not single, if you're not married, you're te- technically you're single still, biblically speaking, you're, you're still single if you're not married, so, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, basically, you know, if that person's unequally, if you're unequally yoked and that person is not a Christian, not trying to follow God, Christ, and things like that, it's not going to work out. And I have witnessed that so many, not I won't say so many times, I've witnessed it just recently in, in this past summer. And it's not it's not going to work. And, you know, it, thank God that things didn't go as far as they could have gone. But don't put yourself in that situation where things can go that far. You know, because I promise you, when you're, you know, living, when you're walking out this journey, man, don't let anything hinder you. And that's the, I, I would say, I would say that, relationally that's probably one of the biggest things that can hinder you from your walk with God, walk with God is being unequally yoked with somebody you know if I'm trying to be in the ministry like if, if I'm a if I'm trying to be in the ministry why would I be with somebody that is not interested in doing that with me or not even necessarily interested in it, doesn't support it why like really like why would I be a LeBron fan and I say okay LeBron fan you got LeBron fans Stephen Curry fans those are probably the most uh, opposite fans, opposite fan base. Like they probably hate each other. They they talk. Uh, no, LeBron and Michael Jordan. I say I, I say Stephen Curry because I'm a Stephen Curry fan. I like LeBron though. And but LeBron, and Michael Jordan, they hate each other basically, or at least they talk very bad about uh, the other the other uh, the other fans' favorite player. And so why would I be a LeBron fan and go for Le, uh, a Michael Jordan fan and talk good about LeBron? If I love Michael Jordan, I hate LeBron. I would not, that, that, they two, those two don't go together. Like, I'm going to always say Michael Jordan is better than LeBron because I'm a fan of him. And that probably is the worst illustration of what I was trying to say. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, if they're not supporting you in your walk with Christ, why would you be with that person? Because they're gonna, only going to pull you down. They're only going to lead you down uh, another path in some, some way. It might be a small path. It might be a little back road. You know, don't take a detour. Don't take a detour. I like to say this. It's better to get it right the first time than the second time. It's good to learn. It's, don't don't get me wrong. It's good to learn, but get it right the first time. Don't ha- don't don't go through the detour, and you, you never know what might be on the detour. You might not ever know what might be on the detour. You don't want to know what's on the detour. Curiosity kills the cat. Don't be so curious that you want to see what's on the detour, because honestly, God God creates barriers for a, for a reason, and He creates creates them to keep you safe. So, you know, make sure that you're in line, make sure you watch your influences and make sure that, you know, you understand who's in your life, where you are mature, uh, spiritually in your, oh goodness, how am I going to say that? Know where you are, be able to know where you are spiritually in your uh, mature, your maturity and spiritual aspects of your walk with Christ. That probably made no sense. Know where you are spiritually and in your maturity in that and be able to have the wisdom to in moments discipline yourself where is this going to lead to you know where it's going to lead to most of the time discipline yourself to, uh, to think about the things that you do before you do them because chances are you're going to regret them and i don't care if you say you people have regrets no matter what you do no, people have regrets because if you never have any regrets you honestly haven't did anything because honestly i think we would be it, it was good everything worked out for our, in our favor and it, it was good but at the same time if you had to live your life again, would you really do that again? Uh, and it's kind of hard because those things are who made you who you are today. But it's just like saying, if you were, you know, if you were older now, what would you tell yourself when you're younger? That mean if you're gonna tell yourself something younger, that means you're gonna tell yourself something to propel you forward to be better than who you are right now. So in other words, in in any way, type of sh- way, shape, or form, do the things that you would tell yourself back then. 
if you had to take the ch- if you make the bad decision, do the things that you would tell yourself that you know tell yourself at a young age that would actually put you in uh, put you in the right direction, going on the right path. Uh, but guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this episode. Please, please, please let me know how uh, what you think. You know, comment, share, like, subscribe. First of all, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. i every Friday, or at least I, I, that's my schedule. That's what I plan on doing every Friday, giving you guys another episode. And so I hope this really edifies you guys, and I hope you learn something from it and take something from it and apply it to your life. Uh, but guys, please, like I say, hit that subscribe button, like it if it, if it, you know, if it blessed you, if it edified you, please like it, comment, let me know what you like most about the, uh, about, you know, this episode, and please go back and watch the first episode if you haven't, on uh, Love Before You Judge, so, um, it's your boy Jalen, I'm gonna end it like that every time, that's how I used to say it's your boy Goggles, but y'all have a great day, I'll see y'all later.